Hello all, welcome to Let's Learn Optometry. In this video, we will see the anatomy of conjunctiva. The name conjunctiva has been derived from the term conjoin, which means to join, because it joins the eyeball to the lids. It is a translucent mucous membrane which lines the posterior eyelid surface and the anterior eyeball surface except the cornea. Here, the white portion shown is the conjunctiva, as it is a translucent membrane. The underlying sclera is visible in white. Role. The role of conjunctiva is to ensure smooth movement of the eyelids over the globe. It aids in immunity. Conjunctiva has certain glands which helps in producing the tear film layers. Uh, beginning with the gross anatomy of conjunctiva, it is divided into three parts. Palpebral conjunctiva which lines the eyelids. In this picture it is shown in yellow. Then the bulbar conjunctiva which lines the anterior eyeball surface except the cornea which is shown in uh, green in this picture. The fornicular conjunctiva or fornix which joins the palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva it is shown in purple in this picture. We will see one by one in detail. Palpebral conjunctiva it lines the upper and lower lids. It starts at the mucocutaneous junction of the lid margin and is firmly attached to the posterior tarsal plate present in the lids. It can be further divided into marginal, tarsal and the orbital conjunctiva. Marginal, it extends from the lid margin to about 2 mm on the back of the lid up to a shallow groove which is called as the sulcus subtarsalis. Tarsal conjunctiva, it is thin, transparent and highly vascular. It is firmly adherent to the whole tarsal plate in the upper lid. In the lower lid, it is adherent only to the half width of the tarsus. Orbital part, it lies loose between the tarsal plate and the fornix. Bulbar conjunctiva, it is thin, transparent and lies loose over the underlying structure and can be moved easily. It is separated from the anterior sclera by the epistelial tissue and the denounce capsule. It is subdivided into two types, a 3 mm ridge of Bulbar conjunctiva around the cornea is called the limbal conjunctiva. The remaining portion is called as the scleral conjunctiva. Conjunctival fornix, it joins the bulbar with the palpebral conjunctiva. It is loose and redundant. It is a continuous circular cul-de-sac which is broken on the medial side by the caruncle and the plica semilunaris. This is an eye with upper and lower lid everted showing the caruncle and plica semilunaris. Fornix can be divided into superior, inferior, medial and lateral portions. Now we will see some special regions of conjunctiva. Uh, the first one is caruncle. It is a small ovoid pinkish mass situated in the inner canthus just medial to the plica semilunaris. The function of the caruncle is uh, poorly understood. It contains non-keratinized epithelium, accessory lacrimal glands, hair follicles, sebaceous and sweat glands. Plica semilunaris. It is a pinkish crescentic fold of conjunctiva in the medial canthus. It is a vestigial structure in human beings and represents the uh, third eyelid of the lower animals. The main function of the plica is to allow full lateral movement of the eyeball without tissue stretching. Microscopic anatomy, histologically it consists of three layers, the epithelium, adenoid layer and the fibrous layer. The adenoid and the fibrous layer are together called as stroma or the substantia propria. Epithelium, the layer of epithelial cells in the conjunctiva varies from region to region and in different parts. The number of layers at each region of conjunctiva and its corresponding cell types are given in this table. Uh, Cells present in the epithelium are goblet cells, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, conjunctival associated lymphoid tissue, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. Adenoid layer, it is also known as subepithelial layer or lymphoid layer. It consists of fine connective tissue reticulum in the meshes of which lies the lymphocytes. This layer is most developed in the fornix. Uh, this layer is not present since birth but develops after 3 to 4 months of life. For this reason, 
the inflammation in the conjunctiva does not produce an follicular reaction in an infant fibrous layer it consists of a meshwork of collagenous and elastic fibers it is thicker than the adenoid layer except in the tarsal conjunctiva where it is very thin this layer also contains vessels and nerves of conjunctiva blood supply uh, it is richly vascular supplied by the anterior ciliary artery and the palpebral arteries the veins from the conjunctiva drains into the venous plexus of the eyelids and some around the cornea into the anterior ciliary veins lymphatic drainage there is a dense lymphatic network which uh, drain to the preauricular and the submandibular lymph nodes corresponding to that of the eyelids nerve supply sensory innervation of the bulbar conjunctiva is through the long ciliary nerves innervation of the superior palpebral is through the frontal and lacrimal branches of the ophthalmic nerve inferior palpebral conjunctiva is through the lacrimal nerve and the infraorbital branch of the maxillary nerve all the sensory information is carried in the trigeminal nerve glands of conjunctiva there are various glands at different parts of the conjunctiva uh, first one is the mucin secretory glands these glands produce the mucin layer of the tear film Uh, by the goblet cells so goblet cells are unicellular uh, glands in the epithelium of conjunctiva then comes the crypts of henle they are present in the tarsal conjunctiva then the glands of mans they are found in the limbal conjunctiva accessory lacrimal gland these glands secrete the aqueous layer of the tear film glands of kraus they are present in the subconjunctival uh, tissue of the fornix they are about 42 in the upper fornix and 8 in the lower fornix glands of wolfring Uh, these are present along the upper border of the superior tarsus and the lower border of the inferior tarsus thanks for watching subscribe to let's learn optometry for more optometry and eye care videos thank you